Urinary tract infections can be common in children, particularly for girls. There are preventive measures that can be taken to reduce these conditions. Dr. Tony Curry of Children's Hospital of Orange County describes what interventions are available to treat this condition. Urinary tract infections is one of the commoner infections that happen in uh, infancy and childhood. It's responsible for many of the visits to uh, primary care physician's offices, especially in children with uh, fevers. Urinary tract infections in children are caused by entry of bacteria into the bladder. In infants, it's common in boys. However, beyond the first year of life, it's less common in boys, especially those that are circumcised. Beyond the first year of life, it's much commoner in girls. Urethra, or the tube that takes the urine out of the bladder, from the bladder to the outside, is much shorter in girls than in boys. And so bacteria come in from, most of the bacteria that cause infections are, uh, reside in the rectum. And so they come out, colonize the perineum, colonize the vagina, colonize the urethra, invade the bladder. Whenever you take your child to the family doctor or to the pediatrician, and the baby has a fever, it's always good to collect a urine specimen, but make sure that the urine is tested for the presence of white blood cells or pus cells, because that's a sign of inflammation or infection. If I have white blood cells in the urine, then the body's trying to fight an infection. If I just collect the urine and culture it and there's just bacteria with no pus cells, that's not a sign of infection. Infections in most children are quite preventable. There are four simple measures that can reduce the frequency of urinary tract infections very significantly. We asked Dr. Curry, what is the best way to prevent this? It's important that the child drinks a lot of water. And what's a lot? A lot is a cup per year of age, up to eight cups per day. So until the child is eight years old, they drink eight cups, and then beyond that, it's eight cups a day. So every one of us adults has to drink two liters of water a day or eight cups of water a day. Eight eight ounce cups of water a day. Secondly, we want the child to empty their bladder before they get an urge. We don't want them to hold. When we're toilet training our children, it's important to teach them to urinate, not to hold. We want them to urinate every two hours, three hours at the latest. This way the bacteria have six doubling times at the most, and they can't increase in number sufficiently to form that critical mass that attacks the bladder wall. We also want them to have a very clean bum. We want them to be cleaned right away as soon as they have their bowel movements. We don't want any stool smears to sit around the opening of the urethra and the bladder. And we also want the children to be constipation free. We, children have to have a bowel movement every day and their bowel movements have to be soft. The small little pebbles, even though the child is having daily bowel movements, small little pebbles mean that the child has a colon that is full of stool and they're just overflowing, whatever little pebbles come through. So those four simple measures, drink your water, a cup of water per year of age, urinate every two to three hours at the latest, and that's seven urinations a day, avoid constipation, and maintain excellent perineal hygiene or maintain excellent cleanliness of the bottom end. Those four simple measures prevent about 90% of bladder infections.